Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be speaking about panic attacks. Have you ever felt your heart pounding suddenly out of nowhere? Possibly feel totally out of control. You may be sweating or maybe you felt shaking, choking, feelings of extreme fear, maybe even terror. Well, in this video, we're going to be speaking about some of the symptoms of a panic attack. We're going to discuss the difference between anxiety and a panic attack, and I'm also going to list five tips to help you either navigate a panic attack or help someone else that might be in a panic attack. Okay, so my name is Marie Morin. I'm a therapist and a wellness coach, and I help busy professional women overcome limiting beliefs so that they can let go of perfection and step into their most aligned, confident self. Let's get started. Okay, so if you've ever had a panic attack, you're not alone. This recent data that about 4.7% of the U.S. population of adults and about 2.3% of adolescents have suffered at least one panic attack. Now, this data isn't um, up to date. It's not 2020 or 2021. So it's possible that these numbers are kind of low considering the newest um, atmosphere of tension and uncertainty and a lot of hardship that's been going on due to the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the important things for you to know about panic attacks, according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, um, fifth edition, the DSM-5 from the American Psychiatric Association, is that a panic attack is not a mental disorder. It's a specifier. It means it's part of other disorders, or it could just be an isolated panic attack. So according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, fifth edition, you have to have four of the following symptoms in order for it to be an actual panic attack. And here they are. Palpitations, pounding heart or accelerated heart rate, sweating, trembling or shaking, sensations like shortness of breath, choking, smothering, what I'll call extreme fear or terror, nausea or other abdominal symptoms. You might feel dizzy, lightheaded, maybe you've even fainted. Perhaps you're feeling a sense of not being in reality or being detached from yourself. You might even have felt the sensation of being or losing control or going crazy. And also you might feel tingling sensations, numbness. Maybe you've gotten the chills or hot flashes. Maybe some chest pain. You might be fearing that you might die. One of the important things also to remember is that if you have a panic attack, it's a really good idea to go to a hospital because you wanna be sure that the symptoms that you're having are not caused by another physical illness, like that you're not having a heart attack or something is terribly wrong physiologically. So often people that do have panic attacks end up at a hospital emergency room and they get checked out. Once you've gone to the hospital and the physician has cleared you of any other physical reason for you to have those symptoms, they might say something like you've had a panic attack. Now panic attack is different from panic disorder. A panic attack is often an isolated individual experience that is a surge, meaning it comes out of nowhere. It's not like it's been winding up and you've been feeling all this discomfort. It's something that happens out of nowhere. Okay. Now the good news is there is treatment available. So there's medications, 
Um, some of them are SSRIs. And there's also something called cognitive behavioral therapy. Now, cognitive behavioral therapy is extremely um, effective for panic attacks and the thoughts that you might have because of a panic attack and during a panic attack. So we're going to go over the five tips um, that you can do if you're having a panic attack or if you're afraid of having another panic attack. Okay, tip number one, remind yourself that this is a panic attack. If you've just gotten checked out by a doctor recently and you've been told that there's no physical reason for you to have these symptoms, then you could tell yourself, I'm not in immediate danger, I'm having a panic attack. Um, that grounds you into an accurate statement. Because if the fear takes over and starts telling you, oh my gosh, there's something happening, I'm dying, I'm dying, or something terrible is going to happen, um, then you're not able to ground yourself into the accuracy of you're not in immediate danger. This is a panic attack. Panic attacks are thought to be caused by the fight or flight system. Um, where you have all of those physiological responses to being very, very scared. Um, and so learning how to get yourself from extremely frightened and fearful down a couple of notches so that you can do um, and feel a little better is important. So the second tip is to do deep breathing. So there's a number of different breathing exercises, but I want you to just remember that you're going to inhale to the count of seven and you're going to exhale to the count of eight. What you want to do is not shallow breathe. Do your best to remember not to be breathing out of the top of your chest. You want to bring the breath down into your belly and you'll do that if you take a deep breath in to the count of seven and then exhale to the count of eight. So you'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then exhale to the count of eight. And you keep doing that until you can feel yourself and your body kind of release the intense fear. It's not going to be instant. Most likely it may take a couple of rounds. The panic attack symptoms may take a lot longer then uh, you want them to, but you will eventually get some relief. So maybe you'll do that five or six rounds of that. But remember, keep the breath deep into the belly and not be shallow. Tip number three is to be mindful that you're doing your best and this will end soon. So just keep reminding yourself you're doing the best that you can. These are just symptoms. This will end soon. And before you know it, it will be over and you will have some relief. Tip number four, remind yourself that this is about fear. So yes, this is fearful having your pounding chest and your heart rate accelerate and sweating and thinking you're going to die can scare you a lot and it's understandable that you're scared however this is fear and if you could just even at this moment right now think of a time when you've been extremely fearful but you've gotten through Wake up that memory inside of you so you have it to remind yourself that you have done things afraid before and you could do them again. Tip number five, consider talking to a professional who can help you um, with these symptoms. Now sometimes, and this is where a panic disorder comes in, if you become so fearful about the possibility of having another panic attack that you then begin to avoid and maybe stop doing what you would normally do because you're afraid you're going to have another panic attack, it could run into a diagnosis of panic disorder. And we don't want that to happen. So you can um, talk to someone, someone who's understanding, someone who knows 
about you, preferably a therapist or a good friend that has some kind of experience with this. A therapist is a really good person to speak to because they have training in how to address a panic attack and also to help you navigate this very difficult um, event. Um, so that's tip number five. Okay, so what's the difference between ordinary anxiety, which is very uncomfortable, and a panic attack? So anxiety is something that you are concerned about that is potentially in your future, something that you're worrying about. Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? And maybe you're thinking about it a lot. So a panic attack is very different from anxiety. A panic attack is a sudden er surge of feelings and sensations, okay? The fear of possibly dying or the feel, fear of something terrible happening. Um, and then the physiological sensations such as feeling like you're choking, palpitations, those come on suddenly. Anxiety is something that you've been experiencing for a while, and it's about a lot of worrying and concern about what's going to happen in the future, something that you're not quite sure about, and you're thinking about it a lot. So that's the difference. Um, and in the case of anxiety, um, you could have an anxiety disorder and have panic attacks attached to it. Um, and that would be anxiety with a panic attack, okay? So now, in this video, we discuss the difference between anxiety and panic attacks. We also listed five tips in order to um, manage a panic attack or help someone through. We talked about reminding yourself that it's a panic attack because you've just had a doctor's visit and you know that you're not in any immediate danger. We talked about deep breathing, inhaling to the count of seven, exhaling to the count of eight until you get some kind of relief. We talked about being mindful that you're doing your best and that this will be over soon. The longest an anxi uh, pardon me, a panic attack lasts is for about 20 minutes and that's um, not every panic attack is going to be that long, but that's the very longest it would last. Um, tip number four, we talked about that to remind yourself that this is a fear that you're having and that you have been through fearful events before and you will do it again. And tip number five is to consider talking to a professional who can help you navigate the physical sensations and the thoughts that you get that accompany panic attacks. So I hope that this video has been a help for you. If it has, please hit the like, the subscribe, and ring the bell. And even better, I'd love to hear your comments below if you've ever had a panic attack, what you experienced, and what's been helpful to you. Okay, so have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.